December 9th, 2004 was supposed to be a normal day in the cenotes of Tulum, Mexico, an underwater cavern about 80 miles south of Cancun. A nine-person group was gearing up to dive this legendary dive site, planning on splitting into two groups, one with four less experienced divers accompanied by a guide and a group of four who were much more experienced divers. This is the story of the tragedy at the Grand Cenote. Kent Hirsch and Michael Nast were a part of the more experienced group of four. Along with William and Jane Downey, all four individuals were certified in cave diving and were visiting from various cities in Pennsylvania. Having just arrived in Mexico the night before, the group was ready to explore the beauty the cenotes of Mexico had to offer. Kent Hirsch, a 53-year-old dentist practicing in Centerville, Pennsylvania, was an avid bicyclist and skier, who had been diving for about a decade and was a respected diver in his local circles. Having taught various courses, he was known for being very safe in not only preparation, but also in maintenance of his own equipment. With well over 100 dives under his belt, he felt very comfortable in most diving situations. Michael Nast was a 36-year-old antitrust lawyer employed at his family's Lancaster, Pennsylvania-based firm. He was also an avid biker while also having completed multiple marathons. He had been diving for the better part of his adult life and had well over 100 dives completed by the time he visited Mexico. Being described as professional in all aspects of his life, his friends and family called him extremely competent and an all-around class act. From what I could find, all his previous dive partners agreed with those assessments. What drove these two men to visit Mexico together was their shared love for diving. Having completed several dives together all along the coast of New Jersey and Florida, diving different shipwrecks and underwater caves in the area, they were close enough to give each other diving nicknames along the course of their friendship. Hirsch being called Dr. Deco, short for decompression, and Nast being called Caveman. These two men had a clear bond, which only got stronger each dive they set out on. This was confirmed by a few mutual friends who commented on the connection the pair had. The Mexican newspaper Por Esto reported that the Tuesday morning of December 9, 2004 started like any other diving day for the pair. Both divers went through their usual meticulous diving preparations and precautions and were at the cenotes by mid-morning. Previous diving partners recall Hirsch being oddly paranoid during these checks in an over-precautious manner that always brought a sense of safety to their dives. Hirsch mentioned on several occasions that mediocrity was never an option. Making sure they were diving with certified cave divers when all nine divers went over the dive plan at the Grand Cenota entrance, they were all confident that safety was a priority and that the dive was going to be uneventful. Please keep in mind the following facts are pieced together between various blog posts of people who were there that day and the reporting done by the Por Esto newspaper. The group talked about diving the traverse from Cenota Kalimba to the Box Chen Cenote in the Sac Uktum system. The group met at the entrance of Grand Cenote, which is one of the most popular of the cavern. Gearing up together, going through the necessary safety checks, and reviewing the dive plan one last time, the group of nine was ready to go. Setting off at around 11.30 a.m., the group of nine decided to break up into two groups to avoid crowding the tunnels. The first group consisted of five, four divers, and one guide. The second group had the four others, consisting of Hirsch, Nast, and the pair of Downings. Group two dipped under the water five minutes after the first group as both teams were sharing one set of reels for the various jumps off the main line it required to go to Box Chen. As long as group two followed the lines group one set, there should have been no problems. Two minutes into the dive, the first jump was presented to group one. They diligently tied off their reel, setting the agreed upon route, and left a team cookie marker to indicate to group two it was the reel to follow. These cookie markers allow divers to recognize their own equipment faster, as two identical reels are easily differentiated if there is a marker fixed to one. But when group two reached the jump, although they picked up the team cookie marker, they turned the wrong way heading towards Cenote Hotel. All four divers in group two took the wrong turn and quickly deviated from the dive plan. As they followed the arrows on the preset line, they headed further away from the exit as they traveled another 1500 feet into the passage. Throughout the 25 minutes of swimming, the Downings took pictures on their primitive underwater camera until they all reached the end of the line and realized they were lost. While they thought they could retrace their steps, they were unable to find their way among the very few jumps they completed on the way in. Trying to relocate the Grand Sinota mainline or even the Hotol mainline, they did manage some progress during their retreat to safety. Meanwhile, Group 1 proceeded forward after not seeing Group 2 come down the jump line. They continued through their planned dive and surfaced at Sinote Box Chen. After quite some time of not seeing Group 2 emerge from the water at their planned exit, they drove back to Grand Cenote to find them. 
Back underwater, the group of four were entering a panic. Being low on gas and quite unsure on which direction to swim, they split into pairs. This was the final mistake the group made. The pair of William and Jane Downey surfaced in Grand Cenote while sharing gas between the two of them. Using what was left in William's tanks, the pair had just 500 psi left when they surfaced, which could be between 7 to 20 minutes of breathable gas depending on the depth. However, the second pair of Hirsch and Nast did not surface. Once the Downing surfaced and saw the other two weren't emerging from the water, they geared up with more gas and dived back down looking for the men. Eventually finding them between 200 and 300 feet away from the surface of Grand Cenote, both men drowned within 20 feet of the main reel. It took two separate search teams to recover their bodies over the next two days, which occurred without incident. These deaths were a result of divers diving against their plan and making too many mistakes along the way. The slim margin for error, once they deviated from their dive plan, was their own demise. The Downings were lucky enough to come out with their own lives, and the pair who did die are a reminder that cave diving is dangerous, and the rules you were taught along the way need to be followed if you want to surface. Kent Hirsch's family and friends said they will remember him as a man who was passionate about life and had a boundless energy about him. His wife said, everyone who knew him loved him. His enthusiasm just bubbled over. Michael Nass will be remembered by his charming personality, someone who deeply cared for those around him, by not only celebrating their accomplishments, but by also offering his advice when asked. His family said he was just a joy to be around. He is survived by his wife Wendy, and a daughter who was three at the time of his passing. Rest in peace to these two men. That is the story of just one of the tragedies that have occurred in the cave system at the Grand Cenote. If you enjoyed that scary, fascinating story, please consider liking, subscribing, and commenting. It is greatly appreciated. Thank you so much for watching, and if you haven't seen it, please check out this video that YouTube thinks you'd enjoy.